Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. So we just got off this boat, and we're gonna walk for about an hour in the jungle to find a moth pupa. So okay, Phil just found it. So what are, what are we looking at here? This here is the pupa of a moth called a eroded moth. Now the moth itself isn't that special looking, but this pupa here is just incredible. So that's the chrysalis inside? Yep, so that's the actual pupa inside, and then on the outside, is the cocoon. So most moths will make a really strongly woven silken cocoon and uh, try to hide, but this guy has a different strategy. And instead, it just dangles almost a foot down from a leaf, and then it makes its uh, cocoon there. And that probably protects it more so from ants than anything else. It seems so counterintuitive though, to build something like that. It's almost like, hey guys, check me out. Oh crap. Look what I was leaning on. Oh, yeah. Golly. You got a butterfly in your hat. You know that? Yeah. On my hat? Yeah. Where? Oh, yeah. It's a satyr. A satyr? I can only think about these ants right now. Are you using a macro lens or just a 100? I'm using a 105 macro. You should see, be able to see the fine structure. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, this cocoon is really one of a kind. Um, you can actually find these guys up in North America. Lucky. So how does he, okay, so he's gonna become a moth, right? Yep. So how does he get out once he's? So it kind of looks, if you look at the bottom there, it almost looks like a little escape shaft. So it's possible that once it comes out as a moth, it'll just shoot right down. Do you want to put your finger under it so we can see the scale? You got your manicure? Yeah. Are you ready for this? I've been cleaning my nails all my Cool. Okay, so please make this transition with me. So as soon as I got back from the Amazon, I had to go to a wedding reception. As I'm sitting there making small talk with this guy, I start explaining this beautiful cocoon I found in the rainforest because it made such a huge impact on me. So I explained that if a cocoon is to keep predators out, why would I put holes all in my cocoon? And the guy said something that shocked me. He goes, oh, that's interesting. I happen to be a butterfly farmer. I've come here to Mr. John's house and I've brought my kids with me and John owns one of two butterfly farms in Alabama. He's going to show us a little bit about cocoons. How do you sell butterflies? How does this work? Well that is a fascinating question. That's one of, actually one of my favorite questions to answer. <laughs> <laughs> but this is actually the general way I ship butterflies. Right in like this. And uh -huh. I'll, just, I'll just pat them and put layers. Uh, most of my butterflies go to zoos, botanical gardens um, around the country. So you don't really sell like 10 at a time. You sell hundreds at a time, right? Right. I I would say my average order is about 100 butterflies a week. So what we have here, this is a Luna moth cocoon. And um, some people are confused about the difference uh, in, a, in a cocoon here and a chrysalis uh, or, or a pupa here. Um, and the difference really isn't that great. The inside the cocoon is actually your pupa. Um, so this, the cocoon itself is really just the covering that the pupa uh, spins around itself. If you look here at the spice bush swallowtail, it has it does not have a cocoon, so it's just the pupa, whereas the the luna moth actually spins the cocoon around the pupa. This is the picture of the uh, the thing that we took in the rainforest. Yes, and that it's a beautiful example of a cocoon. Why is the here? I'm saying these cocoons are solid, but on that thing, you know, there's holes in the cocoon. Why why would it do that? Well, that's actually a very important uh, defense mechanism. If you look at the cocoon um, on, on this luna moth, it's very tightly woven. Um, so if this was hanging on a tree like like, you, like the one you found down in the Amazon, if it was hanging like that, as massive amounts of rain fell, um, it would actually fill up with water and actually drown the pupa. So those large holes actually allow the rain to just fall through uh, instead of filling up the pupa. Oh, so a pupa actually has to have air. Correct. Yeah. Huh. People don't think about that a lot, but pupa breathe just like any other living animal. They need air. So if they're, they're surrounded by water, if that cocoon was to fill up with water, it would actually drown the pupa. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, John. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Last thing, you hear us using the term chrysalis. That comes from the Greek word chrysos, which means gold. Some butterfly pupa have a gold shimmer to them, so that's why they're called a chrysalis. I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, my goal here was for you to learn, enjoy, and maybe see something beautiful you've never seen before. I will now try to earn your like or subscription by providing a link in the video description to the high resolution photos of the cocoon because it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Sure, I gotta ask, what are you doing, man? Trying to see the details.
Rather than get him, steps back and uses a binoculars. I think Jerson needs some glasses. <laughs> How long have you lived out here? Well, I am from here. I was born here. And I actually know this place very well. I have almost 10 years guiding in the area, but I never seen this before. Ever? To be honest, never. Are you just not a very good guide? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like the birds more than the butterflies, but I always focus in details, new things, yeah. because I, I like these, these things, but I never seen this, honestly. Awesome. So you've lived here your whole life and you've never seen this? No, really. And uh, if you want to check out John's stuff, I may or may not leave a link, depending on what we decide. <laughs> so anyway, have a good one.